All right, in this video, I've already created my light switch, and so all I have left to do is put a design on it, and I have a specific picture in mind that I want um, part of it to be on my light switch, and so I, I want to show you how to put an image into Inventor so that you can um, so that you can trace it. All right, putting an image in it does not mean that you can just put the image in and then you're done. That is not how Inventor works, unfortunately. Uh, I wish it was, because that would make life easier, but it doesn't. All right, so I'm going to show you. We're going to go search for an image that we want to use. All right, so I'm going to go down to my browser to Chrome. And it's going to open. I plugged in a flash drive so we can practice using the flash drive to save our image. I have all these things that pop up. All right, so all I'm going to do is I'm going to search. I'm going to put a Firebird on mine. Okay, and I need to put Kettering Firebird. All right, so I can go over to Images. And I can look for exactly which Firebird I want. And I just want the head of the Firebird. I don't want um, the tail or anything like that. So I think that this one, that's eh, pretty blurry. One of these might be my best bet to go with. And so I'm going to, well, all you have to do is look for the image you want. Now it's really small. Um, I'm going to do this one. Now, all you have to do is you right click on it and you go to save image as. And then you find your flash drive over here on the left hand side. All right, it's always going to be under computer. Okay, so there's mine. And then you can change the name if you want, but I'm going to leave mine, and I'm going to hit save. Alright, so there it is down there. It's been saved, so I can go back to Inventor. I'm going to hit Start 2D Sketch, and click on the top of my light switch. I'm going to hit Project Geometry, because I want to make sure I know where I should put my picture. Um, where the holes are, where the edges are, that kind of thing. And then I'm going to click on the square in the middle, or the rectangle in the middle, so that those lines kind of pop up out of out at me. All right. And then to put the image into Inventor, you come up here to where it says Image. And it's going to ask you well, where can I find this image. So you have to go and find your flash drive. And there's my image, and I can click Open. And now there's the window following me. Okay, and so I can click, and sometimes, okay, sometimes it puts it in sideways. Uh, maybe I want this to go sideways, maybe I wanted a different um, orientation. And so what you can do, it, it works just like rectangles and triangles and things like that. So I can come up here to the horizontal constraint or the vertical constraint. So I'm going to go to vertical because I want this horizontal line to go up and down. All right, so I've clicked the vertical constraint, and I'm going to click on this yellow dotted line here. And so when I do that, it turns it. And, all right, and so maybe it turned it the wrong way. If it did that, you can hit undo, go back to the vertical constraint, and click on the opposite line, not the green dot. If you click the green dot, it won't work. But the whole line, you click it, and then it'll flip it the other way. All right, the other thing I can do with this image, I can click and drag it. I can click on a corner and I can shrink it down right, and get it right where I want. I can even dimension it. So if I wanted it to be in the middle, and I'd click and drag it onto my thing and then I could dimension from that line to that line. Um, let's do 0.5 just for now. And from here to here it is 0.5. And see it's going to, it's going to, um, stretch it a little and that's fine but now it's it's in the middle there all right so you can do anything with this that you can oops, do with a rectangle um, so I'm gonna put mine right here I'm gonna stretch it out because I'm just doing the firebird head so I'm put it close to that circle so it looks like he's eating the circle and then I'm gonna come in here I zoomed in real close, and so now what I have to do, you can get as close as you need to to see what's going on, but I'm going to use my arc, and the arc works just by you click in one spot, you click where you want the arc to end, and then you kind of 
move your mouse till it gets exactly the way you want it to be. All right, and so you just have to go through and trace all the sections. It's important though, when you're doing this stuff, that when you start a new arc or a new line, that you start start at the end of the last one, and you know you've started at the end of the last one if you've got a green dot. So a yellow dot is not necessarily going to cut it. If I do it here, okay, well I've got a hole now, okay, and so um, I'll show you how to fix that after we're done drawing our our Firebird here, okay, and I'm going to do it pretty quick. So you're going to want to take. Take your time. You don't have to rush it. All right, and I purposely put it over top of that um, hole for a reason, so I can show you. And see, I, I've seen a little arc right here. I can do that. Now I've got a straight line, so I can make my life easier and draw a straight line in there. I'll draw a straight line. Yeah. It's kind of just whatever you want to do to make it yours. Um, to make it match your bedroom, that kind of thing. So you can go back and forth between the arc and the... The other thing is, like, if you're too far out, it's only going to go a certain distance. You can't really make it as exact as you want. And the closer you go, the more exact you can be with the, your placement of the arcs and the um, lines and things and circles and all that stuff. Alright, so I think maybe one more. I'm just gonna, there. Yeah. Alright, so there's my um, Firebird logo. At this point, if I'm done with the picture, to be quite honest, I right click, I click on the picture once and then I right click and I go up to delete just to get rid of it so I can make sure and see the whole image, make sure I like it. If I don't like it and I want to fix it, I can always go back to undo and put the picture, and it, it will put the picture back in for me. Um, but a couple of things. First off, we've got this line here that goes over my hole. I can't have anything going over the hole. So I could sit here and try and zoom it out like that, but I want that shape there. So the other thing you, I can do is come up to trim, the trim will just cut off the section of line that I want to get rid of. So I click trim, and then I click on that section of line that's on the hole, and it goes away. All right? And it attaches itself to the edges of that box instead. All right? um, so now I could hit finish sketch, and this is what a lot of people are going to get. So this is why I'm doing it this way. Remember, I accidentally put a hole in, in part of mine. So if you don't realize it and you actually put a hole in it, it's going to tell you the same way mine is doing right now. So I hit extrude and I can't click on my image and it's all green line still. That tells me that I have a hole. Alright, so I'm going to hit cancel. I'm going to come over here to sketch 3 and double click. And I'm going to start looking at all the points where lines join. And what I want, I want to click on the line and I want to see a yellow dot at the end of each line. So I click here, I see two yellow dots. I click here, I don't have a yellow dot over here. So I know that this one is not connected to the other point. So I can zoom in here and I can see, oh look, it's not connected. So I could do two things, I can click and drag, but a lot of times that will mess my curve up. And so a lot of times I like to come up here to the coincide constraint. All right, and this is just going to tell the two points that they need to be touching. So then I click on the end point of one of the section lines and the end point of another, and it's going to join it up for me with very little um, disturbance to the rest of the image. Uh, and so that's going to be the solution to that problem. The other thing I see a lot of is, if I can get it to do it for me, nope, not there. Let's come over here. Um, let me show you. Let me get one. Actually, let me do, do, do. Let's delete this one, and I'll show you what I see a lot of. Okay, maybe I come here and I draw it like that, and we've got a line sticking right here. This won't extrude either. Okay, so there's two things I can do. I can click on the endpoint and drag it down here. Okay, but if you notice, some of my stuff over here changed a little bit. The other thing I can do 
is I can use that trim button. So I hit trim, I click the excess line here, and it goes away for me. Okay. So now I've got, I know I have all my points connected. Um, if I'm not sure, I can hit finish sketch and extrude. And you'll notice my, my firebird turned a darker green. The lines turned a darker green, almost blue. And so now I know that it'll extrude. And if you notice, it turns white. All right, so I can click on it. I usually set my extrusion to about 0.1. I would not go any greater than 0.2 in the extrusion because it just, it'll fall off. It'll pop off, it won't look as good. All right, so I hit the green check mark and I've got my Firebird image like I want it. And so I'm going to move on to the next video where I show you how to use or how to change it into the file type for the 3D printer.